It doesn't matter which side of this argument you're on, but I think we can all agree that some pretty spicy memes have come out of this. Like, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, welcome back to another Punishing Grey Raven video. My name is Lace, and today I wanted to talk about all of this outrage, all of these concerns, red flags, and all of that. I guess I was a little bit of a clown thinking that we'd get that skin for free, but like, you know, we'll see what happens, right? But before we actually get into the video, I do want to say to you guys, like, freaking chill. If you guys are arguing with each other, please at least remember that there is another human being on the other end of the screen. Just like how I am just another dude on the other side of your screen, there is probably another person behind the text that you disagree with. And so no matter which side you're on, be constructive, be critical, you know, if you're gonna leave feedback, like leave feedback, don't just call people names, like calling them idiots or dumbasses or whatever. Definitely express your views, whether you are defending it or attacking it, but remember to show at least like some level of decency, guys. All right, and so with that being said, I wanna talk about A, like where we're at right now, and B, I'm gonna give a recap for like everyone who doesn't really know what's going on. All right, to summarize it all in one kind of sentence, there have been a lot of like, I guess, changes from the CN or like the other servers, and these changes include stuff like nerfs to your black card acquisition, the amount of rainbow cards you get when you purchase, like, you know, stuff like that, right? And so I want to, like, talk about the facts first before I start giving any opinion. So what a bunch of people have done is that they have done, like, the analysis. They've done the one-to-one -one comparisons. And so this is the first image I want to show you guys here. Essentially, what you're seeing here is that this is a comparison between the Taiwan and the global server for the novice missions. This is a one-to-one -one comparison with all of those quests. So you see, it is day one on both. And this one is clearing the normal stage one five. And this one is getting your equipment level up to 20. So as you can see, at least the numbers match up. This one is have three of the constructs reach level 15. So guys, at the very least, like trust that I can read numbers. But when you look a bit closer, you'll realize that these black cards, you can see it's times 100 up here in the Taiwan server, but it's only times 50 down here in the global server. And so what this means is that effectively our black cards have been halved from these rewards. So far, we're only able to see up to like day four, I think. And so I don't know if the problem persists from day five to day seven. However, seeing this already, this is not really like the greatest change. One thing that we do know is that we see this guy over here as well as this guy over here. And you'll notice that there is an extra like milestone where you have to hit 160 for this costume. And so this doesn't exist on the TW server. And what I want to say here is that we might get some extra missions which may make up for those black cards. And so what this means is that in the end, we may end up with parity with like the amount of black cards that we get from the entire event. However, what this further means is that we might have to work harder for it, seeing as we have to go for 160 when they landed on 140 for the final reward. This one, I think, is a way and see and so we need to see what happens like when we get to day seven personally my opinion is that if we do achieve parity and we do get the same amount of black cards overall then it's good however if we don't and if we do maintain a loss of 50 percent black cards then it's not going to be looking real good so for example some people have calculated our potential losses and so i want to bring your attention to this one because this image up here is actually not quite correct so yeah let's have a look at this so here what you can see is that on taiwan or the other servers we would be expected to get 11.2 pulls after we finish all of the missions. On our server, if we keep getting half of the pulls, then we actually get 6.4 pulls. So we are losing five pulls technically. However, for those five pulls, we will get a skin instead. And like, to be honest, I personally think it's a really sick trade-off if we do get the skin. However, I do understand that a lot of people don't value skins and they would rather those pulls. In that regard, I think you guys need to make your own decisions whether you want to outrage for that or not. Obviously, it would have been nice if it was like 11.2 pulls plus the skin, but you know, we can't have everything, right? Also, I'm not 100% that this calculation is correct either because like on day five, I think there were a couple of quests that were at 100. However, what needs to be confirmed is that like when we get 100 black cards, was it supposed to be 200? So this, I suppose, is unverified information. I don't know if they like halved it from like day one to four and then didn't touch from day five to seven. And so yeah, to wrap it up, I think we need to see where we're at for day seven before we can make any more judgments. Because again, we might be loaded with a couple of other rewards like from five, six, and seven. All right, guys, so I just got a quick update. I do see this live stream from Fury Production who has been making a lot of PGR content, so shout out to him for this content. But essentially, this is the CN server because of the simplified Chinese. And so as you can see, they are also getting 100 black cards on day five. And so I think this is evidence to prove my point, right? So we might actually get that parity, like we might get more quests in the later stages of like this novice missions. And so in the long run, it might work out so that we actually get the same amount of black cards. However, again, we won't know until we get to globals day six and day seven to see what is really there. Okay, so moving on, the next thing I wanna talk about is this guy over 
over here. Now this one affects like everybody who is a paying customer because it's a little bit dodge, I guess. And it's a little bit dodge because as you can see here, for 30 RMB, you are getting 30 rainbow cards. However, for 5 USD, you are getting 28 rainbow cards. And I want to explain why this is significant. So first of all, the monthly pack actually costs 30 rainbow cards. So you can see this is like a clean, clean value over here. However, if we look down at the global version, you'll notice that we don't have like a nice round 30 rainbow card pack. And so what we have to do is we actually have to go for the 34 rainbow card pack. And by now we've already paid an extra $1.50. And let me show you how I work that out. So 30 RMB translates to about $4.63 in the United States dollars, the USD. So what that means is to buy 30 rainbow cards, it costs $4.63. If I come back over here, you can see to buy 28 rainbow cards, it's already costing $5. So just for this pack itself, what I am seeing is that you are getting less cards for more money. And so guys, keep in mind that this has not even taken into account like the conversion rates. For me personally, because I'm in Australia, I'm getting like ultra screwed for this. And so I'm sure like the countries that are not doing as well as the Western countries are going to be like having an even worse time than this. And to be honest, I really sympathize with you guys. Okay, guys. So the last thing I do want to talk about is this slot machine event over here. Me personally, I'm not a massive fan of this slot machine event because like I personally feel like there was some like I, I'm not going to call it misleading, but like I guess miscommunication. So I'm personally not a massive fan of this energy recovery operation event because I thought like when I read through these event rewards, I was assuming that I could earn it all. And I don't think that's like really an unreasonable expectation. Typically in gachas, well, like all of the mainstream gachas that I've played, everyone has been like able to completely clear the event shop. So I'm talking like Genshin Impact. Every time there's an event, you can clear the entire thing free to play. Others would be like Arc Knights, Alchemy Stars, Epic Seven. And so I guess just in my experience, I would have thought like, you know, if it mentions the event rewards down here, I would expect to be able to actually get it. I think if they communicated it a little bit better and set up expectations or maybe not put it into this event, it'd be a bit better. Personally, I think that they should have like put it like straight into the shop and just sold it for like 30 USD or something. This is something for me that is like really disappointing to see because like they have this event over here, like this cool slot machine event in which you get like a whole bunch of rewards. It's exactly as I described it in like my EN exclusives video. However, when you get to the wide range detector, what's going to happen is that you're actually only able to get up to 8K and you can't actually make up the rest. I don't know how you guys feel about like not being able to clear an event. It's just like, I don't know, it's just kind of sour. I think if they really wanted to make money from this skin, they should have just thrown it into the shop. And I said for like free to play players or like all players, you can only get up to 8K. And so as you can see, there is a deficit of 12K to go from 8K up to 20K. And the only way to make up that deficit is to like actually buy those packs from the store. And I think if you do pack yourself like so hard that you can get 20K, I think it works out to actually be more expensive than any other skin. However, for what I just said, I did not actually do the calculations for it. And I'm relying on what like other people have shown me. And I know some other members of the community or like YouTubers are just like, oh man, it's just cosmetic, like forget about it. I just really want to say that there are a lot of people who don't play gachas just for like, you know, or like ranking one or like meta or stuff like that. For me personally, like I'm a collector and I like to like clear things. For example, in Ark Knights, I like clear all of the achievements and get all of the damn medals. However, I have not even cleared the game yet. Like I haven't even done like chapter nine or chapter 10 or whatever is released. Genshin Impact, same thing. Like all of these games, like there are different ways to play the games, guys. Yeah, sure. The skin doesn't affect gameplay, but like, you know, I'm playing more as a collector. And so what I want to say about that is that it doesn't mean that I'm entitled to this skin over here. But part of being like a collector or a completionist is that you're able to like clear the event fully. And so for me personally, and I think for a lot of other casual players, like if they were to take out a whole bunch of this stuff and like put crap in it, but still let us be able to complete the entire event, I think I would be way more happy with that. To be honest, I may be a more rare breed. I don't know if like anyone else actually thinks like this, but yeah, there are just like different ways to play games. And I personally value skins a lot. And so with that being said, I kind of want to like work backwards and give my thoughts on all of this. Starting with this one, I think I've already said everything I wanted to say. I'm not like overly happy about this. I completely understand that Kuro Games or like PGR or whoever does need to make money, but I just think that the way that they did it just wasn't really there. And so I really do hope that they take the feedback and like improve on the next events. As for this rainbow card situation, I am not a fan. I personally feel like it's a little bit scummy. It's like kind of forcing us to buy the next tier up and to have like, I guess, useless rainbow cards because you would actually have to buy quite a few of these or do a little bit of like mental gymnastics to be able to like, you know, do the 30 per month. I really wish that they just like kept it really straightforward, like put a price on the 30 rainbow cards and that's it. But from an end consumer point of view, it does feel like they are like trying to skim off an extra dollar, especially like because this one doesn't exist elsewhere. And if any of you guys are thinking about the $1 moderator meme, like don't talk about it here, okay? All right, and so working backwards, last thing we have to talk about is over here. I think in particular for this one, we just need some patience, especially because of what we just saw. Day five for the global server is identical to the day five of the Chinese server. And so if they are like added rewards or like change of a reward structure, not like just a direct nerf, then 
I personally think it's just going to make a massive difference. So yeah, this one, I just don't think it's worth outraging for yet until we see what is locked behind six and seven. All right. And so with all of that context, I want to show you guys some pretty funny memes because I think no matter which side you're on, whether you're defending or attacking the game, like everyone can appreciate some good memes. And so we've got this one over here, PGR dev to CN server. It's like, oh dear, oh dear, gorgeous. And it's funny because it wasn't always like that. CN server actually had a lot of controversy before like they actually went to the full free to playness. And then we've got over here, PGI death to global server, you effing donkey. Oh my God, I love Gordon Ramsay. And so the next one I've got is this guy over here, which is punishing global players, which is, I don't know, it's, I think it's so funny. Like I said, it doesn't matter which side you're on. I just think that good memes can be appreciated by anyone. And then so last, what I've got is this guy over here. And so like essentially he wrote a post and then all it is is copium. I just think like when people get together, like really funny things happen. Obvious it's not always the right things that happen, but like at least like sometimes it's pretty funny. And so last we have this one over here and it's like, hey guys, why is my black card cut in half? And so this one is just referring to like this guy over here when we got our black cards halved. This is just so incredibly funny because the guy that's posting it has a freaking Primo Gems avatar. Like God guys, like even if you are like defending the game, like you gotta admit, this is pretty freaking funny. All right, I think that's enough memes and let's start talking about like where we're at right now. Has Punishing Grey Raven or Kuro Games or whoever, have they issued an official statement? No, they have not. However, a whole bunch of content creators such as Chaotic, they've actually been able to like reach out to Kuro Games and get like some of a mild response. So for Chaotic, he said that the rep at Kuro Games said that we are working overtime to look over all of the feedback. Please wait for the development team to discuss possible changes and release an official statement. This is really cool, but like, why did it have to come through a content creator? Chaotic is really popular, obviously more popular than me since I don't have a contact at Kuro Games. But yeah, so obviously they are aware. If you have a look at the Discord or like the subreddits and stuff, like there are some like statements from moderators and stuff that say like, oh, you know, they are looking into it. Just be patient, guys. I personally think it's okay because it is going to take up some time to be able to actually come up with a solution that's going to appease everybody. Because guys, remember that they are a company and they can't just like throw everything at us for free. There's got to be some level of compromise. And so like, let's wait and see it. And so the next thing I wanted to show you guys is the Punishing Grey Raven app on the Google Play App Store. And so as you can see, it has been review bombed. We've got all of these one star messages over here. It has tanked the app from like a 4.7 or something down to a 2.8. And so yeah, that's happening. And look, like guys, I am not condoning review bombing. I just think that if you guys do have feedback, like just go express your feedback. But as always, please try to be constructive. Like don't send death threats or like don't send assassins to the headquarters. If you guys do think that they deserve a five star, give them a five star and tell them why. And then obviously on the other hand, if you think they deserve a one star, you better tell them why as well. But otherwise that is where we're at. We've got content creators, a whole bunch of them saying like, oh, you know, Punishing Grey Raven, they know about it and they will give us a good message later on. It's funny because like nobody told me like Kuro Games, why aren't you in my DMs, bro? All right. And so that being said, I think that's like all of the content itself. And so before we wrap up the video, I do want to give like my thoughts on the game itself, just from like a holistic perspective, like including this drama, but also including all of the good things about it. Just remember guys that one, I am not sponsored and two, I don't have any contacts at Kuro. And so this is probably like my most raw review of the game so far. I personally think that this is a fantastic game and should be like the game of the year. However, with all of these different issues arising, I think that they do need to like, you know, be a little bit more careful. I think if they are able to sort out these issues and actually move past all of this, this could, it probably will be the game of the year. I am not sure that there is anything that is actually going to match this, like perhaps Alchemy Stars. And it's so funny because Alchemy Stars had like little to no advertising. But yeah, PGR, I've been hyping it up for months. Like if you guys have been watching me for like six months or something, like I already told you guys, I will be picking this game up. And I'm not like a variety YouTuber, right? Like, you know, when I pick up a game, I go really freaking in depth in it. And I chose this game because I knew that this would be a really good game with a lot of in-depth mechanics. And so yeah, for me, the gameplay itself, all the quality of life, like all of the performance, all the optimizations, I think this is a solid nine out of 10. Like it's not like the most incredible thing, but it is really close to it. And so yeah, honestly, like if Kuro Games can like hash this out and find some sort of compromise, I do think that this is still going to be one of the greatest games in this year. I personally, aside from all of that controversy, I still like really enjoy this game. And so yeah, I don't know how many more times I can say that. So let's just start wrapping up this video. Secret message. And I want to say respect because no matter which side you're on, I do want you guys to respect each other at least. Respect that A, there is another person on the other side of the screen and B, that they might have like different values or like some other things that they value more than others. Respect that there are different opinions and don't just go name calling, okay? And so yeah, if you guys could drop that secret message down in the comments below, it means that you've actually made it to the end of the video. And so I'm really grateful for that. But otherwise, please like, subscribe, comment, follow, pin. You guys already know what it is. If you want to support the channel, we've got affiliate links. We've got a membership thing in which you get a cool badge and some emojis. But otherwise, as Lee once said, all good things must come to an end. And so thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.